Today we are going to be investigating astronomy. Open up your Earth Science Review Packet and turn to page one. Let's first look at this. Do you remember this image from the fall? Rotation and revolution. Can you distinguish the difference between the two based on this image? Remember that rotation is an object spinning on its axis. So here's the Earth. You can see there's this imaginary pole that splices through the Earth, and it is along this pole or axis in which we rotate. It is rotation that creates day and night here on Earth, and it takes Earth about 24 hours to rotate. Make sure that you write down this first bullet in your note-taking packet. And now let's look at revolution. What is revolution? What does it mean to revolve? Revolution is when one object moves around another in space. So the Earth moving around the Sun would be revolution, or the Moon revolving around the Earth would be revolution. For the, the Earth to revolve around the Sun, we know that this takes 365.25 days for the Earth to make one complete trip around our Sun. Let's review these two terms. Look at this image right here. The Earth is blanking on its axis. What's it doing? It's rotating. Let's look here. Here you can see that the Earth is blanking around the Sun. What do we call it when one object moves around another? Revolution, or to revolve. As we revolve around the Sun, though, something odd happens here on Earth. We know that our temperatures change, right? In the Northern Hemisphere, as we move around the sun throughout the year, we will have increases or decreases in temperature. But why is that happening? Well, the reason we have seasons is because the Earth is tilted on its axis. So when we think about the Earth, let's remember that there is this little star out here, right? And we call this Northern Star Polaris. In the Earth's axis, we are always tilted towards the northern star of Polaris. So as we revolve around the sun, there are points in which as we are tilted towards Polaris, we are also tilted towards our sun. And when we are tilted towards our sun, we actually receive more direct sunlight in the northern hemisphere. This more direct sunlight actually increases our temperatures here, giving us summer. Then as we continue to revolve around the sun, there comes a point in which we, our northern axis, is tilted towards the northern star, Polaris. However, this means that we are actually tilted away from the sun versus towards the sun. So what does this mean for us? It means that we have less direct sunlight in our northern hemisphere, and this gives us winter. When we look about the Earth revolving around the sun, there's a reason that this happens. Let's talk about the first reason that we have things revolving in space. That is due to gravity. What is gravity? Gravity is a force of attraction that pulls all objects towards each other. There are two things that affect the strength of gravity. These two things you need to write on your note-taking sheet. The two things that affect gravity are mass and distance. Let's first talk about mass. Look at this picture here. Do you see the image of all of the planets in our solar system? Look how massive Jupiter is in comparison to Earth. Earth is literally the size of the red spot on Jupiter. This means Jupiter has a ton of mass. And here's the thing about mass. The more mass an object has, the stronger its gravitational pull. And the smaller mass an object has, the less its gravitational pull. This makes sense. Think about it. Think about the planets with the most moons in our solar system. They just happen to be the planets with the most mass. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, they have a massive amount of mass, which means they have a lot of gravity. So they have the ability to pull more objects in to their gravitational pull, and then those objects will orbit around them. We'll talk about how orbiting occurs in a moment. Let's first look, though, at the second thing that affects gravity, and that's distance. So we know that the sun is the most massive thing in our solar system which means that it has the most gravity, which is why all the planets revolve around the sun. But not everything revolves around the sun. I mean, the moon revolves around the earth. And how can this happen? This, this is because of distance. Distance is the amount of space between two objects. And the less distance between two objects, the stronger that gravitational pull is. So because the moon is actually closer to the earth, than it is to the sun, the moon actually feels the Earth's gravitational pull more than it feels the sun's. 
It's the combination of both mass and distance that affect the gravity of all objects in space. But that still doesn't answer the question as to why things are orbiting or revolving around one another. One piece has to do with gravity, but the second piece has to deal with inertia. All things orbit around each other in space due to a balance between gravity and inertia. What is inertia? Inertia is a tendency of an object to resist a change in motion, which we know that this is Newton's first law of motion. Remember, an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. So in the beginning of our solar system, every object was set into motion, and it wants to continue moving in that straight line. However, it can't, because as an object is moving, it will feel the gravitational pull of something else and be pulled in towards it. But then, inertia makes it want to continue to travel in a straight line, and then gravity pulls it back in. So it's the balance of inertia and gravity that makes things orbit. There's something else though that gravity can affect besides orbital motion, and that is this. Do you remember watching this in class? This is the Bay of Fundy. This video is a time lapse of what occurs in just one day at the Bay of Fundy. Do you see how the water level has risen? And now it is beginning to recede? This is happening due to gravity too. Let's look at this. Gravity actually is pulling on the Earth's oceans, and this creates tides. Tides are the rise and fall of ocean water that occurs approximately every 12.5 hours here on Earth. What causes tides? This is what you need to be writing in your note-taking packet. What causes tides is the difference in gravitational pull from the moon and the sun. So they are pulling on different parts of the earth and is actually creating bulges. And this is what creates things like our high, our high tides. In the areas where the water is not bulging is where we have low tides. Let's look at this idea that we have earth, the moon, and the sun. The earth, moon, and sun together team up and create something else too. And this is eclipses. Please turn your note-taking sheet over to the back and you will see it says eclipses. What are eclipses? Eclipses are a block of light from one celestial body to another. So let's look at this in more detail. Let's look at solar eclipses. In your note-taking packet, I would like you to actually draw a solar eclipse. Remember, what is Sol the name of again? Sol is the name of our sun. So when you have a solar eclipse, what we're really talking about is we're talking about the sun. And then you remember that the word eclipse means to block. And so when we have a solar eclipse, it means to block light from the sun. So this happens when the moon moves directly between the earth and the sun. Of course, this picture is not to scale. It looks something like this. You can actually see the moon here. Do you see the craters and you can see the maria? And then you can see the sun's corona around the outside. And if you look right here, you can see a prominence. Now let's talk about a lunar eclipse. What is Luna the name of again? Luna is the name for our moon. So remember that the word eclipse means to block. And so when we have a lunar eclipse, what we have going on here is we have the moon being blocked, which means light is being blocked from the moon's surface. How does this happen? Well, it's because the earth moves directly between the moon and the sun, blocking the sun's light from hitting the moon. And it looks something like this. But you might be wondering, if the moon is orbiting around the earth and the earth is orbiting around the sun and it takes the moon about 27 days to orbit around the earth, why do we not have lunar and solar eclipses every single month. Look at this image here for the answer. Do you see it? It's because the moon's orbit is tilted. It is this tilt of the moon's orbit that prohibits this perfect lineup of the sun, moon, and earth from occurring. Let's look at some more about this idea of light and shadows occurring in our space. The moon is a natural satellite, right? A natural satellite is something that orbits around a planet. When the moon orbits around the Earth, it actually creates phases because the portion of the moon that is illuminated by the sun is changing based off of the moon's position as it orbits around us. 
Let's look at these four terms that are associated with moon phases. Make sure you define all four terms in your note-taking packet. We use the term waxing when we see that the light is on the right side of the moon and the amount of light is growing. Remember the analogy I gave you in the fall about the idea of waxing a candle and how every single time you dip the wick into the wax and pull the wick back out, the wick has become thicker and then you dip back in and you pull it back out of the wax and it becomes thicker and this is really the growing of a candle. When we talk about the, and this is called waxing a candle. When we talk about the moon waxing, what's happening is every single night, it's like dipping the moon into a vat of wax. Every single night, a little bit more light, a little bit more light, and a little bit more light, and a little bit more light is seen on the moon's surface. So the moon appears to be growing in light. Remember though, we know based off of an investigation activity we did this fall, that half of the moon is always in sunlight and half of the moon is always in darkness. It's just what we can see here on earth that is changing. Now when we look at the term waning, wane is like to wither or to shrink away. So when we have a waning moon, the light is on the left and the light is shrinking every night, which means each night there is less and less moon reflecting off the moon's surface. Remember the terms wax on and wane off that we did with our hands? Don't forget these. Let's look at the word crescent. The word crescent means one fourth of the moon is illuminated and it has a banana shape to it or like a C shape. The word gibbous is bulging. So here you have three fourths of the moon eliminated. Make sure you define all four of these terms in your note taking packet. Tomorrow we will review seasons, rotation, revolution, gravity, inertia, eclipses, moon phases, and tides. We will also add into our lesson tomorrow things like solstices and equinox.